and this makes me so angry. Before moving to Singapore, I heard a lot about this place. Singapore's so boring, there's not much to do, Singapore's so expensive, you won't make any friends. I've been living here for more than a year now and I want to talk about the expectations I had that turned out to be completely false and some of them that are actually true. Number one, crazy rental prices. And I hate to break it to you, but this is actually very true. And especially when I moved to Singapore in 2022, it reached a peak where it has been the highest rental prices in a very, very long time. The problem is that you're often bound to a two years contract, which is the only possible way to negotiate the price a little bit down so that it's not as expensive. But the downside of course, is that, you're, that you have to stick to the contract for two years. There are one year leases, but then you have to pay a bit more per month. Some of my friends here in Singapore, they actually got an increase of their rent by 60%, which means before they paid 3,500 for their apartment at Marina Bay, and now they pay over 5,500, which is really crazy. But I've heard the good news is that rental prices are coming down. So, so maybe in the near future, it's gonna get less expensive. What is actually not true is that it's hard to find a place because there are so many apartments out there. Most of them are ready to move in. So when you see houses, you can actually move in the next day. This is what happened to us. We saw an apartment, the price was okay, and the next day we were ready to move. Also, when you're looking for a single room, there are so many options. There are Facebook groups like Singapore Rooms or looking for room in Singapore. It's literally not hard to find something. It's only a matter of how much you want to spend and which area you want to stay in and with how many people you want to share the apartment with. But it's not hard to find something. Number two, Singapore is so expensive. And I've heard this so many times. Oh, you're moving to Singapore, it's gonna be so costly. But you know, I've talked about this so much and I really wanna talk about it again because it's simply not true. Yes, rental prices are expensive, but the cost of living, if you make the right choices, is actually really affordable and way more affordable than the life in Switzerland for sure. Let me give you some examples. If you go grocery shopping, yes, there is cold storage, which is more expensive, but that's more of a fine food grocery store. There's Sheng Xiong, which is very affordable, online stores like Lazada or Red Mart, where you can get very good offers and they even deliver it to your home. If you want to eat out, again, you have hawker centers. A plate of Hokkien mee, a noodle, a really tasty noodle dish, is around five Singapore dollars. Sometimes it's even cheaper to eat out than actually cook yourself. I have not been cooking for like a year, but it's just so affordable and so good. A plate of chicken rice, you can get it as cheap as $3.50. It's insane. In Switzerland, a single cucumber is around $4. Then public transport, which is very affordable. One ride to the city is around one Singapore dollar, maybe 150 if you, if you go a bit further, but not more than $2 one way. In Switzerland, I would pay nine Singapore dollars for one way from my mom's house to the city. And it's only a 15 minutes train ride. So not, that, not even that far. That adds up to 18 Singapore dollars per day just for using a public transport. And I wouldn't really go far. Then there are a lot of free things to do. The beach at Sentosa is free. Outdoor activities like visiting the botanic gardens or go for a hike at the McRitchie Reservoir. There is free exhibitions at the museum. If you're a PR, even the National Gallery is free. Yes, if you shop at Orchard and if you have a penthouse at Orchard, it is very expensive. And cars are very, very expensive. I think the most expensive in all over the world. But yes, public transport is efficient and cheap, so you don't even really need a car because it's very, very efficient to use the public transport. Number three. And this makes me so angry when people say Singapore is boring. That's what I've heard before coming here. And now I can really say it's not true. Maybe people who say that, they are just boring. There are so many exhibitions. There are a lot of concerts. There are museums. There are outdoor trails. You just need to keep your eyes open and maybe do some research, but there's a lot of things. Also on Sentosa, you can go luging. You can go bungee jumping. You can... How you have different beach clubs. There are so many restaurants you have to explore. Probably I will never be able to explore all the restaurants I want to, even if I lived here for 20 years. F&B scene is changing. As I mentioned, food festivals. You have the cinema. It's, there's a lot going on also for clubbing. You at Club Street, there are really cool bars. One of my favorite is employees only. You have a club here at Marquis with a Ferris wheel inside. You really cannot say Singapore is boring. Number four the expectation that I will only hang out with other expats. This is so not true. 
90% of my friends now are actually locals. I don't know if it has to do with my job that I work as a full-time content creator where a lot of people are really outgoing, but it's actually also not very hard to make friends. I was just at Strong Pilates the other day and there was this girl next to me where we're looking at each other while doing the workout, super exhausting, and we started chatting and at the end of the class, we were basically exchanging phone numbers, saying, yeah, we could go for a coffee. And she was from Singapore. So the expectation that locals don't wanna be friends with any expats, it's definitely not true. Number five, 365 days of the year, tropical climate. Yes, this is true, but I wasn't expecting to see differences in rain and heat. So there is the dry season from November to January where you can really see that it rains more often once a day, minimum 15 to 20 minutes, but it can also just rain one day, one full day, wouldn't even stop. The dry season and the hot season as well is between May and July, where you can really see that it is a lot hotter than in the rest of the year, but I don't mind that at all. I just, I still love the heat so much every single day, not as in Switzerland. I was freezing there all the time. So most of the things that people would tell me and would actually make me worrying a bit are actually not true. And if you want to see more of what I do, where to find the best hawker food, what gym places you can go to, or where to, where to make friends, just check out my Instagram channel, Swizzy in Singapore. And if you have a question, feel free to DM me anytime. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.